What's up, everybody? I am Automatic Jack. We are here for a little more Rank Ruin Storm, not Practice Alpharius. Uh, we'll start with a quick challenge crate opening, see what we get. Hey, a Triumph of Volinor. Alright, that does not do a whole lot for me. Good deal. We got an abandoned supplies, though. Did not have two of those. <clears throat> Very glad to have our second one. I had not been uh, looking at Imperial Army crates for a while. So glad to have this common that I was missing. All right, and a bonus 42 coins. So with that, we will toss it on over to our Ruin Storm deck. My uh, my Alpharius deck, in case you're curious, I can I can put it up later. It is mostly just to mess around. It is for practice, uh, playing around with the trap mechanic. Sometimes it is entertaining. Oh, speak of the devil. Uh, Sometimes it is entertaining to watch a giant string of traps come off. Hopefully that will not happen to us in this game. We'll see. It really, I think it uh, it's too inconsistent for rank play in my experience. I'd be curious to see what this guy looks like. And for that matter, what Warlord he is. I think uh, the Sniper Exodus can be a pretty, a pretty scary dude. Um, otherwise, I don't necessarily... I don't know. I, I have not had great... Excuse me. Oh, goodness. I have not had great luck uh, with my trap heavy deck. Probably ought to be uh, playing more troops in it. But this guy is going full on in traps. In my experience, you really have to get the traps drawn at the right time in order to have an impact. Uh, if they're drawn too early, <clears throat> they do not combo enough. They don't build up to critical mass. If they draw too late, then uh, the enemy is able to burn you down before you have uh, the opportunity to get a lot of utility out of those traps. I mean, it's a very, very slow deck. Um, as you see, you're, you're basically doing nothing for three turns other than spamming traps into the enemy deck. Okay, well, we are probably just going to unspoil land here. Uh, we want to do our card drawing early while there's relatively few traps in the deck. Um, that is that is wise. We want to get these off the board. Okay, see, there we go. And uh, we'll get our pawn up. We'll go to his face. But that's what I'm talking about. Uh, if you get a lot of if you get a lot of card draw mechanics, uh, things that have your opponents drawing cards. If they're drawing your traps, outstanding. If they're not drawing your traps, not as outstanding, unfortunately. Okay, we could toss away uh, the Fallen, but I think it is much better to Rot Swarm into a Seek and a Counterattack. This gives us more face damage against him, gives us a bonus Rot Fly. That's what we're looking for. Alpha Legion decks are uh, quite, quite good at uh, buffing up their health again. You have a lot of options to buff up health. He has his original card, whatever it is. Uh, there's there's definitely potential that he can come back from even a low health deficit. I've had one games where I was at 4 HP. Okay, so he has, by my count, maybe 7 traps in our deck uh, out of 24, so we're, we're drawing close to... Uh, Close to about a one in uh, one in four that we're gonna draw a trap. Just replace that. Get our fury on the board. We really we just need the hitting power as much as possible. We, want to keep that. Uh, we are not going to swing with this because the one point of damage versus his the making it easier on him taking it off. It's not worth it. Alright, so we're now we're at about one and three here. Yeah, close to, close to about one and three. And there's the we're talking about. We are Legion. Although he does not use his original Warlord Power Burst, he just uses it as a heal five. But we gotta get some uh, some troops out on the board. I think it is going to be the chosen. Uh, because we do not want the Chosen to get, um, we, we need to get out as soon as possible, basically, because we need to, uh, have it 
uh, have a chance to buff. If we draw, like if we play it on turn nine, uh, when we have lots of energy, it's nice, but he that gives him several more turns uh, to spam traps into our deck, and if we draw this big trap bolus in here, uh, we are potentially going to draw five traps, uh, including, yeah, including stuff like that. So there's, there is, it is very, very, very likely that we are going to draw a trap. Very, very, very likely. He has, in many ways, been very lucky so far, as we have not drawn his traps early. Um, sometimes, for example, to draw three traps, if you draw three uh, very early on, that's, that's pretty bad news. Pretty bad news. Exodus in position. Because you're really just giving the opponent cards at that point. Alright, there's his Exodus. We do have a chance, however, to make this... Uh, to make this huge if we do not draw a trap, which, again, looks increasingly unlikely. Oh! Look at that. This guy must be raging. Uh, he really is only going to get one more opportunity. There's the ward. We get the ward. Uh, he's really only going to get one more opportunity with the, uh, with the trap draw before we start slamming him in the face for huge amounts of damage. So he's, he has got to get a trap into our deck at this point. He can do his 9 damage. Okay, there's another one. Okay, now now here the trap uh, the trap nonsense begins. Just destroys a random friendly troop. Fortunately, not our not our most dangerous, or not our, uh, our biggest troop there. We will use Deceit to take this off. And make a rod play. And, and now he has to stun us all again because he cannot shoot at good god he cannot shoot at our uh, chosen because he cannot get through the ward with his shot which is why we desperately desperately needed that ward okay how many how many more traps we're we're definitely more than a half traps in our deck at this point uh, he has 17 cards. We have drawn more cards, uh, so we probably have we probably have 15 actual cards in this deck. So it is more likely than not that we are going to draw a trap this time. It is not guaranteed, but it is more likely than not. Yeah, we're looking at 37, 37, and there's a trap. All right, hit a rothfly, baby. Hit a rothfly. Let's see it. Oh boy, oh boy, this is getting, this is getting scary. This is getting scary. Ah, and he hits our big boy. That is no good. That is no good. Okay, so we can get our uh, Adelon score out there. We also, unfortunately, um, probably would have been nice to get the plague written up when it was uh, still a... when it was still a chosen on the board but you know what can you do what can you do so he'll i like his idea of uh, backlash troops that have the draw cards that's actually that's that's an interesting way to uh, enhance the alpha legion deck that i run um that's that's worth considering there's the harrowing we always see harrowings in these decks i run two in line um it doesn't really do as much for him though because it does put cards back in my hand, thanks to uh, not being able to kill off the, uh, whatchamacallit first. Now, unfortunately, I have a big hand. Hydra Dominatus doesn't do a thing for him, but if he hits some of those draw three traps, uh, that's that's bad news bears for me. Okay. Ooh, man. We are, we are once again just stacking up cards. We gotta get some cards out of our hand here. Uh, Definitely want to fall in. Ah, did that in the wrong order. Definitely uh, should have played the Demonettes first, was not paying attention. Uh, we're going to get our Rot Swarm back out here. Are we, or are we going to get the... Yeah, I think we're going to get the Rot Swarm and the Rot Flag mode. Uh, just to get more cards out of our hand. Make his potential harrowing weaker. We've got this extra three damage from the score, so if it does, yes, we should have we should have stealthed that. That was very foolish. That was very foolish. That was a bad mistake. But he is running pretty 
pretty low. Pretty low on options here. There's a Hydrodominatus. He's he's basically relying on everything in our deck killing us now. Um, it may work. It may work. There are a lot of traps in this deck. There are a lot of traps. However, we already have a pretty big hand of cards. And our having these cards come out is... Uh, Alright, so what can we do here? We can probably, I think, Autolon score here is, is the answer. I think that's stuff. Stuns his guys, gets some face damage in. And he's just, he's gotta keep pressure up because we are not drawing a trap. Um, you know, those turns when we draw five, six traps, that's, that's potentially, potentially scary. But unfortunately, he is going to have his, uh, yeah, he is going to have his big ability here this, this coming turn. So, I don't know, he'll be able to hit us for ten. Not great. But will he be able to do that extra one damage? He will. He will. Uh, nope, he will not because he lowers his energy uh, too much in so doing. Okay. And it all comes down to this. Do I draw a trash? No, I do not. Alpha Legion decks are a lot of luck. A lot of luck. It was a solid deck. I mean, we saw how close he got. He got to one energy away. But a lot, a lot of luck. He uh, actually, I think, could have won the game if he had just shot me in the face for the 10 HP and then let the Deceived Cultist do the one damage. I think he missed a lethal there. So maybe less luck than we thought. Uh, maybe just a misplay from our opponent. Got to bear in mind those single damage. Uh, single damage hits. Alright, so we get a Fulgrim here. Fulgrim is very common. I think a lot of people play him in low Terra because they are seeing him succeed like crazy in high Terra. Uh, Emperor's Children is a tough deck to play. It's tough. You have to be very good at your energy manipulation. You have to plan several turns in advance, and you have to draw fairly well. Um, if you can do those things, obviously not kind of drawing the most luck. Um, if you can do the other part, though, Emperor's Children can be very, very dangerous. <coughs> Big troops, big troops, big buffs, uh, lots of synergy. The question here is, do we put out the rod swarm? We absolutely hit him in the face. It's do do we go straight into the rod swarm? Um, I'm gonna say yes because if he does not manage to kill it, we can protect it. If he does manage to kill it, he has to burn some removal that he would otherwise use on our play prayer or something exactly. So, okay. So he has to use his jam or his uh, his two damage and jam to take that off. And now that, that takes us into our second turn. So we will take our unstoppable plus one plus one. It's already unstoppable. But that extra, that extra point of hitting power, that extra point of staying power is just useful. That really helps. We've got the Plague Bearer waiting. So, exactly. He, he throws out something like that. We can, uh, we can hit this and not need to, uh, not need to worry about uh, hitting it with other cards or counterattacking it or anything like that. Alright, so we generate our Mutate. Uh, I think we're just going to hold on to our Mutate right now. Mutate is... Pretty decent on the Fallen, giving it Survivor, um, giving it plus two or plus zero, plus two in Poison. Uh, lots of lots of good options there for the Fallen. Even even the Rage is not terrible because he has to hit it. <coughs> Interesting choice. Takes the multi damage card off the board. Interesting choice. Now we have the ability to get the Fallen up and to mutate the Fallen. We'll give it the Poison. Poison's front line is scary. And we will simply counterattack that off the board so we don't have to take more face. And the question is, do we mutate the Plague Bearer now? Um, I maintain that we do not. I think we do not. <laughs>
running two deceits usually sees me in this position. Ooh, that is a brutal Malg. That is a brutal Malg. Okay. Well, we can get it back. It, it, it really just cost us a mutate. It's not the end of the world. And we can get it back uh, with the demonettes behind it as well. So, stealth demonettes into Fallen. Alternatively, we could poison it and mutate the demonettes. I think we're probably just better off getting the Fallen on the board. Yeah, I think we're probably just better off doing that. <laughs> we're going to keep chipping away because we are regaining health. Every time we hit him like that, uh, we're basically gaining one health on him. Because we're, and, unless he leaves a wounded troop on the board, which is not common. Okay, he decides to sacrifice his boys. Now that, that is a scary troop. That is a big, big scary troop. And we have the answer to a big, big scary troop. We have Deceit. Running double Deceit comes in pretty handy sometimes. Ignore shield. Ignores basically everything other than ward. So, or, well, and stealth. Other than ward and stealth, uh, Deceit is a very strong removal because it just gives it to you. Gives it to you. And we'll be able to actually play this with perfection uh, back at him, as we'll, yeah, provided that he leaves the demonettes on the board, which now that I say that, he very likely will not. Okay. So, he is, uh, he is running a little bit low on health, however. He is running low on health. Um... I think we just deceit this also. Yeah. Partially for the demoralization. Now we've got uh, some, some big, big boys. We can drop a Fallen into Rylanor. Um, and the next turn we can figure out something with Mutates and Seeks and other things and get our uh, Sardar on Terminators out of the board. how all this goes. Ah, okay. So we got um, basically two options. We can either poison and drop the uh, Terminators. I kind of like that, actually. I don't love it. We could poison and drop the Terminators, or we could fall in and drop the Rylanors. Or Rylanor, rather. Um, I think we poison... Well, the alternative is actually even scarier because we can seek. We've got the help for this. We can take this up to the face. We can uh, we can take that seven to the face and still be in better shape. Moderately large amount of uh, moderately large amount of counterplay, however, so we can fall in, mutate it. Do we take the extra? Yeah, I think we take the extra four HP, and then we'll get our Ravenor out as well. <laughs> We're getting perilously low on health as well. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe blasting that in the face was not a good idea. I think it might have been it might have been better play to uh, go with the fallen and the fallen and the Rylanor and then and then work on the Terminators the next turn. Rylanor would have eaten the uh, removal. He may still eat removal here, but he's going to be in uh, he's going to be in a little bit of health trouble here. As are we. Okay. Let's see if he decides to come back. In the meantime, I hope you've been enjoying the channel. If you have any feedback, I've, I've actually I've gotten a few subscribers. I'm as surprised about that as anybody. Uh, I would love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear your comments. If you have uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, anything like that. I think it is, uh, if, if this was an actual rage quit, which I don't want to cast aspersions, but likely was not, but if it was, I feel like that fits very well. 
That seems like the sort of thing that Fulgrim might do. I think uh, Fulgrim rage quits the Siege of Terra and fucks off back to the war. All right, so two games down. Let's take a look at number three. Who is going to come up? Who do we have? Who do we have? Interesting. A world leader. Erlen? Is that him? Is that Erlen? Um, I can't keep it straight. It's not Karn. It's definitely not Angron. I'm going to say that that's uh, Erlen. Oh, it's Shabrithar. Okay, is Erlen uh, even in the game? Or is he one of those event... Uh, like challenge warlord type dudes. What does Shabrin Dart do here? When he's damaged during his own turn. God same as that. When he's damaged during his own turn, he deals one damage to a random enemy. Interesting. Interesting. He's the aggressor. We're gonna let him just pound away on my face. Nah, pound on my face. Um, oh, and we're gonna get double Elital. We like that. Yes, we do. Now we just need some mutation generation. A, uh, I don't remember the name of it, the, the three cost card that can mutate multiple times. Uh, it would be a fantastic option here. Fantastic. I'm kind of in the mood to just seek and destroy this off, because I feel like we don't get that opportunity very often. And he does not want to play a slow game against me. Okay, now the downside here is the demonettes uh, taking taking damage because he can use his ability, and then this thing has a pretty decent chance of just killing the demonettes outright, which we do not like. So, I think we're still going to have to try it, though. Um, the alternative is a Fallen. I mean, the alternative is just Poisoning, actually, and going, but that's a... Uh... Yeah, so I think we just, uh, maybe we just Poison that. There's the Path of Blood, though, which we need to get the Elatil out. Um, in the meantime, we're going to Fell Reaver here to get a large enough front line that we can actually do something about these. Well, instead, of, uh, instead of doing that, we'll just, we'll just do the damage. It's going to happen regardless. So he's got his, he gets his two uh, Wrath Squads out, his Wrath Berserkers. World Leader names are very on the nose. <laughs> there. We've got guys named Angron, <laughs> guys named Wrath. Uh, there's there's no fluffy puppykins, the world leader. Although I would be very interested in reading the adventures of fluffy puppykins, the world leader. I should probably do less in terms of making unfunny jokes and more in terms of trying to keep this game together because it is going very poorly right now. Very, very poorly. Oh, we actually come out okay there. Um, he's going to slam both of these into our face regardless. And in fact, I think he has 8, 11, on, 12, 13. Yeah, me. that's it. Uh, you can't save off. Okay. Okay, so that's, that was a pretty, pretty brutal match. We have a hard time um, getting up uh, any kind of any kind of defense against those very aggro decks. Excuse me, I've killed uh, Angrons before, but it's usually reliant on having a lot of frontline or the Angron drawing badly. Our, our biggest weakness is those really fast aggro decks. Uh, don't give us time to draw, don't give us time to, to build up mutations. And a lot of the time, you know, we're uh, one of our big abilities is the ability to poison lots of troops. They don't have lots of troops to poison. You can't poison lots of troops. It comes with the territory. We also have some creatures that start off fairly weak, Demonettes being a prime example. So Demonettes are, again, fantastic, fantastic troop, but they rely on that stealth to hide. Um, you can't hide from the random rage damage 
and world leaders have a lot of random rage damage. And when that comes out, you've got your two health stealthy creature on the board. It's just gonna it's gonna eat damage and and go, and it's not gonna get a chance to to do its sneak attacking. I mean, demonets ideally you want to get the eight damage out of it, the four from the original sneak attack, and then four more from them smashing something into it to remove it. And if you're very lucky, you can protect it, get a third attack out of it. But usually you're you're trying to get that eight damage, which for three energy is strong. The question is, are they going to have um, some kind of non-targeted removal? Desats, um, or any other random that can uh, that can break its stealth. There are things like the outright stealth breaks, um, like the uh, Informa Network. Three energy, one damage to all, remove stealth. But that is... I, I mean, I find Informa Network to be pretty expensive. It's useful. It's very useful, but it's pretty expensive. You can't just uh, you can't just be randomly throwing it out there to deal with a three energy cost creature when the opponent can you know potentially replace it the next turn, and it doesn't kill the creature outright. Not saying it should be bigger. God knows I know very little about balance, but I I have a hard time running the uh, running the three energy remove stealth, especially in this deck where you know Corbs has his own unique method of stealth removal, which is just poisoning everything. Warded, don't care poison. Stealth, don't care poison. Shield, don't care. Poison. What is going on here? This seems long even for a bot match. Very odd. Very odd. I'm going to pause recording and bring it back up when we get a match. And we're back. Alright. Don't know what happened there. Just game decided to hang or something. So we're going to take a look at uh, Salt Harvids. We get a lot of our three energy starters here. We got our we got our starter selection. Three energy sampler platter. This reality makes me hungry. And we see what Mr. Tarvitz can do. Well, he can make a Hall of Rights, which gives him some marks of chaos. Specifically, it gives him one mark of chaos because we can poison. <laughs> Plays his three energy emperor's children. He gets his uh, he gets his five damage there. That's that's a little nasty. We don't love that. But in the meantime, while we wait, we're gonna get our demon ups up. He will be able to smack us in the face once with that. And if he does so, we can get plague bearer counter attack, or we could get uh, rot swarm counter attack, and then poison something else. Which looks like that is what is gonna happen here. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. This is on his, uh, misses on his mark. No luck. I'm sorry. No luck. Uh, so we want our, now the, the alternative is the Plague Bearer. Um, the Plague Bearer would come out. In fact, because we have Elatil in the hand, we're going to do the Plague Bearer option. I think that is better. So we are going to take um, yeah, we'll, we'll drop this counterattack here. Um, and we'll see if we can, well, you know what? I don't know. I think we'll just, we'll just grab this. And we'll take our five damage to the base. That's okay for right now. We can heal. We want that off the board before it gets marks of chaos. We want more mutates. Um, yeah, and then the next turn we can drop a double mutated Elatol. See if he has some some stealth removal. As he has to take his uh, his four damage, he can't buff a card when he does that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll take the Elatol. We're uh, ideally looking for Terror here. Terror would be really nice. Uh, the extra health is okay though. Make it a six six. The or yeah, not double mutated Elatol, but single mutated. Uh, make it a six-six. If we can, if we can mutate it again next time and get Terror on it, that would be great. He does have his, uh, he does have his Terror there. Makes it a seven-six. That's that's pretty horrifying. 
Um, we want to get our... Whoops. <laughs> Don't want to mutate that. Uh, well, there's the terror, which unfortunately does not work. Unfortunately does not work. We're going to have to... Uh, well, honestly... I think terror and using that to kill this is good because it gives us even more mutate. We will get a Fallen up in front of it to try to stop some attacks. We will poison uh, our friend over there. And then we will uh, see how that goes. He's gassing a little bit, down to three cards. That's That's considering he has one poison troop on the board. That's a little tough. What's he got for a big A drop? An Eidolon. Eidolon is very frightening. Eidolon is very, very frightening. Haha, -ha, but we have more mutations. Oh, yes, we do. And if we get the plus three... Ah, that's good enough. Because this will make it a 9-9. Nine, nine. Uh, we could also mutate here and make it an 11-11 with terror. Or we could get a Chaos Fury and make that make everything big. Am I calculating this right? I think I am. Yes. So we want Unstoppable plus one plus one and then Unrestricted Frenzy to make everything huge. We'll make Elital really gigantic and scary. Now, the one thing Elatol does not have is Ward. That is that is our that is our one weakness. We do not have Ward. But we've got a stealth 5-6. Um, if he has removal to get off Elatol, it's already gotten value. Yeah, okay. So he didn't have removal. Uh, even if he had removed it, by that point, it's killed three cards. Two two cards. Um, including a, a big eight energy cost rare. So he uh, he elects to go away. Put troops in play with a basic cost of nine or more. Well, this is not the deck for that. I have no troops that cost nine or more in this deck, alas. All right, let's take a look at game five here. See how things are going. So I think we've had three wins and a loss so far. Here's Russ. Russ is quite tough, quite tough. We can get around some of his uh, warding nonsense with our poison. So, if he has a very ward-heavy deck, that may not help him, but we'll see. We will see. I was thinking about running Nurglings in here. Um, not sure how I feel about it. The The ability to mutate them and have them keep coming back uh, can make them kind of scary. <laughs> unspoiled land and unspoiled land, love it. And there's Plague Bearer. Alright, well we have Plague Bearers for days now. Uh, we are not going to swing because he is definitely the aggressor. He is he is even Lehman Russ named. Uh, that's this is commitment to the role. King of the route right here. Tell me in the comments, do you know Lehman Russ's favorite board game? This is not a pun. Yeah, actually it is canonical in the books. He has a favorite board game. Uh, it is a good board game. It is one that I play myself. We, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna swing this thing probably twice into us anyway, so poisoning it probably does not help because he's just gonna go bang bang. Uh, he might, however, find a way to buff it. So I honestly don't know. I don't know. It's the question here is does he have a means of buffing it? Does he have? Some sort of buff. He almost certainly has more troops, so we are going to uh, go ahead and get that cleave, uh, prophylactic cleave. Try not to picture cloven prophylactics here. Okay, it does not have an outright means of buffing it, so he's just gonna. Yeah, but we did we did the right thing by hitting it because it stopped him from just being able to uh, hit it even more and get even more pack bonuses on that thing, which is already a scary monster. Oh, and we cannot hit it with Ward, unfortunate. On or we can't hit it with uh, with our counterattack because of Ward. That's that is not good news. That is not good news. But we can get a Plague Bearer up, 
Or honestly, we could get a, a Warp Rift and Rot Swarm, which I almost like more because, in fact, I think we're just going to do this. We're going to put the pressure here and let him have to choose between getting that Rot Swarm. I mean, Rot Swarm is a very cheap card. It's a two cost, uh, but it's not a card you can just leave on the board. He is, he is going all in on these big attacks. And he is probably going to be in very good shape because he's going to be able to buff this thing up to a... Oh, and it heals every time as well. Oh, my. Okay. Good God. That's terrifying. Yeah, this this could be lethal right here, in fact. Uh, this, is a, this is a scary, scary deck. Scary, scary deck. Look at this. Nonsense. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, that is that is some fairly classic rust right there. Woo! Turn turn five lethal practically. Yikes! Turn five lethal. Okay. Well, gotta get the fallen. No choice there. And we'll take out a warp rift because we at this point might as well. And uh, yeah, there there was probably not much I could have done there. I, I'm not sure if there were misplays or not, but uh, if I had a means of getting around that i don't know what it was so if if you saw something that i missed please leave it in the comments i'd love to hear it does he just kill me no he doesn't oh yes he does just kill me all right there it is the turn five lethal with rush the rush rush yeah that's that's rush all right all right well there it is so we gained a couple couple points on the day i had some wins in there i think it was three and two uh thanks for tuning in thanks for checking out the video uh please leave me a like leave me a comment tell me what you think and I will see you guys the next time. Take care.